Buddha has a unique position in, in the Himalayas. Because of its biodiversity and its trends on preserving the environment by constitution, the 2008 constitution, 72% of the of Bhutan should be kept as forest. So it is amazing in South Asia. And when you fly from Bhutan to any of the neighboring country, you know exactly where Bhutan stops because there is no forest anymore after that. So it's quite, quite an amazing country. But it is also because Bhutan has managed to retain its independence. And this is to put to the credit of the past uh, governments and the kings. Bhutan has re remained independent and can steer its way to development in the way it likes, in a way. Uh, Bhutan is incredible. It is, its size is between Belgium and Switzerland, and it has 750,000 inhabitants. But on this extremely small uh, superficie, you go, uh, as you go, it's 100 kilometers as a crow flies, north, south to north, and 200 kilometers east to west. And you go from 120 meter elevation to 7,400 elevation meter. So because of this incredible biodiversity, you have got, for example, this is just some example. In the south, you have got all the tropical fruit, papaya, banana, mangoes, and so on. And in the north or central, you have got all the temperate fruit, plums, apricots, apples. So just this gives you an example of the biodiversity on such a small scale. You have got tropical forest and you have got yaks and the steppe of the Tibetan plateau in the north. You have got glaciers. You have got deep jungle. You have got, for example, I was struck in one day, which for Bhutan is a long drive. It's about 10 hours. I did 10 kilo, uh, 200 kilometers in one day, starting from the south, where I just met an elephant and reaching the central where there were yak grazing in the, in the two dwarf bamboos, because yaks love dwarf bamboos. So it was, that gives you an idea on such a small, small country. It's literally an environment hotspot. It is fantastic. Another very interesting point about Bhutan is that it is in the south, on the south slope of the Himalayas. So it gets, at the same time, cold weather from the Tibetan plateau, and the wind, especially. But we've got also the monsoon. So this, this climatic uh, differences give you also an incredible biodiversity. I would say in Bhutan, we live by the biodiversity theme. It doesn't mean it's working all the time, but we, everybody tries its best. The state, as a, the government, has a huge say. First of all, the Constitution, 2008 Constitution, says that 72% of Bhutan should be under forest cover. Now, how could you do that without having a human wildlife conflict that we have in Bhutan. It's not to Shangri-La. That is clear. You have human and we have people having tough time with these conservation issues. So for the forest, for example, they, give, they have devised a community forest. So local communities are given a forest next to their the common forest, which they can exploit according to certain very strict guidelines but they can enjoy, reap the benefit of having a community forest. And they are evaluated, their work is evaluated by the Ministry of Agriculture and Forest. So they have a lot of guidelines and they do a lot of um, empowerment of the local communities by training 
training them, sending training people to train them and to make them understand what is the importance of the forest. Now this has also, and I would like to, to broach on this question, which is the crucial question right now in Bhutan, that the human-wildlife conflict. It is wonderful to have so much forest, but it is also a problem. And a second problem is that due to religious beliefs, you cannot kill animals. We have too many boars, too many bears, too many deers, too many elephants, not too many rhinos. We have too many wild dogs, and this creates a huge, huge problem for the farmers. Don't forget that in Bhutan, 60% of the population still live off the land. And when you have worked the whole year on your field, and that in one night you see your crop being destroyed by boars, in the north, boars are the most, or monkeys, monkeys in the east, they come to your maize field and they destroy it. So for two months before the crop, people built small, small shack, bamboo shacks in their field, and they sit there all night with pots and pans to make noise, to frighten the animals. It's a hard life, and sometimes they can't savage any crop. And I've seen a lot of people uh, crying because their crop was devastated in one night. And that also bring another problem. A lot of people say, why should we stay in rural areas when we have such a difficult life? So that brings the issue of rural urban migration. So, of course, we all support the conservation policy, which is fantastic, which is unique. But the human factor is starting to be better looked in by the government in terms of compensation, if you lose things, if you lose your crop, if you lose your cows. And now, another thing which has come up is that recently, about 10 years ago, the Bhutanese have discovered that Bengal tigers come up, up to 4,000 meters through biological corridor. And the tigers, now in central Bhutan, in the valleys, attack the cattle. And sometimes you find also a leopard in your kitchen, or a bear in your kitchen. And this is not one-time one stories. These are real stories. I'm not making up here. And so the tigers are also a menace for the cattle, for the cows. And when you get 10 cows killed by a tiger, the people have tough time when you come and tell them you have to protect the tiger. So everything, as we say in Buddhism, everything is interdependent. And this is a very good illustration of interdependence of the human and the wildlife and the forest. The wealth of Bhutan, it's his water. And it is his revenue earner. And uh, water is the energy, which is exported 80% to India, which is in great need of energy. The policy is to have hydroelectric project, and by 2020 was to have 10,000 megawatt of water energy. This will not be achieved, probably, uh, and it creates also a lot of problems, because people have the country in the last five years has developed a little too quickly in terms of idol, and that has created some environment problem. Uh, landslide, deforestation, and other problems. And people, the Bhutanese, are not happy about that. So there is real now, right now, a kind of reassessment of shall we go all for idol? project, hydroelectric project, shall we be only putting our eggs in the basket of hydroelectric project. And this has come with the idea which is really sinking down in the population 
of this preservation of the biodiversity and the environment. Because IDEL has created a lot of devastation. And it's not easy to build a barrage or a reservoir. It's not done like that. There has been no, not much uh, population shift because of the barrage. Uh, it's not like in China. About 100 people have been affected, which in Bhutan is huge, <laughs> but it's only 100 people. And they have got compensation, land in compensation. But as soon as, as, soon as you touch land issue in Bhutan, it is absolutely, uh, I would say it's in the genes of the Bhutanese. The land is so important that it is a very, very tricky issue. Now, another tricky issue, which goes with the awareness about environment, is a mining issue. There is not much ore in Bhutan, but there is limestone, especially slate, limestone, uh, which is used for, as transformed for other things. And mining could be a huge uh, revenue for the government. And some concessions have been given to private parties. But now, the people in the village which are touched by this mining are starting to grumble. And with the social media, it becomes much easier to know your uh, rights and wrongs. So people have started to take their grievance to the highest level. And being a small country, it's easy to do that. And people want the mining to be reassessed because they say our crop are being depleted, the dust is killing our lungs, and which country, which land are we going to give to our children because of mining? These are local people, these are villagers articulating their problem in such terms, which I think is absolutely wonderful. So there is a, right now a total reassessment of mine, mining, New guidelines are going to be drafted, and probably the concessions are going to be reassigned according to the new policy.